I'm calling you because you, you have noticed some things about Lisa Osofsky, who is in charge of the Serious Fraud Office. Could you tell me what have you noticed and what have you been telling people? Well, um, I think um, the, the background has to be made clear as well, because as as most people know, HSBC entered into a deferred prosecution agreement in the United States in 2012 um, for laundering drug cartel money and terrorist money and so on. Um, and when you enter into a DPA, um, you have to appoint a monitor to keep it, you know, to make sure that you're complying with the terms of the court order. And HSBC choose who the monitor will be, and they chose a firm. Uh, in the States called Exiger. And so the monitor in the States is a man called uh, Tchaikovsky. I think it's Michael Tchaikovsky. Um, and in Europe, the monitor was Lisa Osofsky. Now, uh -huh. the, the, now, the interesting thing is that the, the p point of the DPA is that HSBC were, were not to commit any of the other crimes which were subject to the DPA during its five-year period. And it's well, it was well known last year that they were involved in what's known as the Russian laundromat. And they were the biggest British bank to be involved in laundering Russian money. Um, so just to clarify, when you're, when you're subject to a deferred prosecution agreement, you've been very naughty, mm -hmm. such as allowing money laundering to take place through your bank. Yeah. And then you, you sign this DPA, deferred prosecution agreement, to avoid uh, the charge of corporate criminality etc and then you're not supposed to commit any crime during that period is that right yeah, yeah any crimes which are the subject of the deferred prosecution agreement and in that case it would be money laundering um, and breaching of sanctions um, right. and it's important also to understand HSBC paid 1.9 billion dollars in lieu of being prosecuted but they weren't prosecuted because George Osborne the Chancellor at the time uh, wrote to Ben Bernanke uh, pleading with them not to prosecute HSBC because it would destabilise the world economy um, and they would lose their Okay, bank George details. Osborne, who's... Okay, George Osborne, who's currently the editor of the Evening yes, Standard in yes, London. Yes, correct. Um, okay. So let's uh, go move forward to last year. Uh, when I stood for Parliament, um, I was uh, against Amber Rudd, who was the Home Secretary last year. Um, at a hustings in Rye, uh, she's the MP for Hastings and Rye, uh, I started talking, well, we were talking about the Manchester terror attack, and, and I started talking about HSBC and their connection with Saudi Arabia, uh, because my view is as long as we're selling arms to Saudi Arabia, these terrorist attacks are likely to continue. Uh, but the moment I mentioned HSBC, Amber Rudd wrote a note to the chairman of the meeting and he immediately shut me down. Uh, so I quickly changed the, changed tack on my talk and started talking about the Tory plans to scrap the serious fraud office and instead uh, the um, National Crime Agency would take over the role of the serious fraud office. Now the National Crime Agency is under the auspices of the Home Secretary, Amber Rudd. Sure, I remember you pointing, I remember watching the video and you turned around and you said to her, fine, if you don't want me to talk about Saudi Arabia and HSBC and um, Theresa May's husband um, doing business with yeah. them, then uh, I've got something else to talk to you about. That's a serious fraud office. I don't particularly like it, but I don't want it closed down because at least it's supposed to be independent exactly. and it, it would be merged with the National Crime Agency, uh, which would therefore be headed by you, exactly. Mrs. Rudd. Exactly. So, um, I, uh, what I've discovered in the last few days is that Lisa Osofsky, who is married to uh, an American lawyer called Mark uh, Wasserman, um, uh -huh. her firm Exeger were paid, this is reported in the Telegraph, were paid £200 million a year uh, to do the monitoring work. And a lot of that work um, was given to Mark Wasserman's firm, law firm, Sidley Austin, which are an American firm, but he's based in London. Uh, right. And similarly, well, the, I'll also mention there was another partner 
at Sidley Austin, who resigned from the firm in 2016 because he was being prosecuted for uh, alleged tax evasion, uh, connected with a scheme which was set up by HSBC Bank to fraudulently avoid tax. The scheme was called Zeus Partners. And, and I, I understand. Okay, but just 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 before you go any further, yeah. um, so Lisa Osofsky, yeah. it appears that she was in charge of Exeger, which were the compliance. She, monitoring she worked. Company, she worked she, for Exeger. I don't think she was in charge okay. of it, but she worked for them. Okay, but she was in charge of their European yes. division. Yeah, and she, either she or her boss, would have given the contract to her husband. To look after a lot of the business, her husband's firm, yeah, and there were a lot of there, there were a lot of people in Sydney, uh, Austin, who were handling, you know, working on the monitor. Okay, sorry, so, right, um, and then the other thing is that you said that um, the report that it was two hundred million came from the Telegraph. Yeah. I believe that the Telegraph, at the time that you were running against Amber Rudd, they said that they quoted Lisa Osofsky as saying that perhaps the serious fraud office's time had come and that it would be better to merge it with the National Crime oh, Agency. Okay, I didn't know that. <laughs> That's, that it yeah. all, it yeah, all no, ties I, in. I did, yeah, so I did some research into her a few months but ago my, my, that my, did come up. My major point is, and as I keep saying and tweeting and blogging about, is that there is a major cover-up. There is a major protection league uh, supporting HSBC, um, especially during the five-year period of its DPA, which is why... Rona Fairhead, an HSBC director, was put in by Cameron to head the BBC. And I've monitored the BBC during that period, and they didn't cover any HSBC crimes. Um, so there is this major concerted effort to keep HSBC out of the news. I mean, they report things like press releases from regulators, but they don't investigate and they don't expose anything themselves, especially The Guardian. Which is the largest? Well, that's not entirely that's not entirely true, Nick. Because I remember in February 2015 there was the panorama where yes, the doorstep. Yes, yes, that was in pr- that was in production just prior to um, um, Rona Fairhead starting, and 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 that went ahead. But since that panorama, uh, there was there was nothing. I see. There was nothing on the BBC. So okay, sorry. So so here we've got Lisa Rosowski's husband's firm involved, getting quite a lot of the money from. HSBC and and incidentally Lisa Rosowski was employed by HSBC uh, as the monitor. So I discovered recently that in October last year Lisa Rosowski and Mark Wasserman took out a mortgage with HSBC to buy a mansion flat in Kensington. Uh, Zoopla which is an online um, estate agent type site uh, valued the property at 3.3 million i don't know how much the mortgage was they were obviously both wealthy people um but i think it's a rather strange situation that she should take out a mortgage with the bank that she is monitoring for compliance with major criminal activity um and i've I, i've got the records of that mortgage or, or the, the title deeds for the property um and then okay could you just could you just go over again so you said that lisa Rosowski earlier on you said she was employed by hsbc yeah. do you really mean yes. that or do you mean her firm Hello? yeah yeah well um her firm i guess but but she you know as an employee of the firm by default she's she was employed by hsbc yeah she's definitely getting her income for yes, yes, really, yes yes like like <laughs> like the guardian um so uh so they took out this mortgage and then in December it was announced that HSBC was going to be released from its deferred prosecution agreement. So in if So she takes out she takes out the mortgage in October 2017 and then she releases them in December. Um uh which which means that it, it has been deemed that in the five years of its DPA they haven't been engaging in any of the activities covered by the DPA. Well, as I've mentioned at the beginning, um, it's well known that they were involved in Russian money laundering. Bloomberg reported that they were involved in illegal capital transfers out of China through its Hong Kong branch. Um, it was involved in tax evasion in Switzerland. Uh, well, it... So hold on a second. The, de- the Department of Justice asked the, the compliance monitor 
to um, have a look at everything to make sure HSBC were behaving. Yeah. HSBC both misbehave and uh, lend money to the person who they are supposed to be monitored by. Yeah. Um, in fact, they lend money to the person who they are supposed to be monitored by, but in actual fact, they are the biggest client of. So they are HSBC are the client of Lisa Rosowski, and they are her uh, lender. They borrow, they they lend her money as well. Yeah, yeah. So she's making money off them in two ways, as well as her husband um, taking business off them, or at least his firm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's important to stress that you know I don't know how much the mortgage is, and I don't know what the terms of the mortgage are, but uh, at the very worst, it's it's a serious lack of judgment. <laughs> to, to get involved with HSBC at, at a time like that. Um, so they were released in December. And then last year, uh, uh, this year, in February, it was announced that the prosecution into the other partner, his name is Carhill, I think it's Michael Carhill, um, but the prosecution against him was dropped by the CPS. And the reason was given that they had not... Uh, it was a ministry to cock up, and they, they, they had done a lot of things technically wrong. Um, and, but his lawyer at the time said, you know, that they concentrated on him, but completely ignored HSBC's role in the in the whole fraud. Uh, uh, they are HSBC are now apparently being investigated by the FCA uh, for it and HMRC. Um, so he was he he was, the charges against him were dropped. And then in May, uh, there was an article in the Times um, expressing frustration at the fact that everybody seemed to know that Lisa Rosowski was in the frame to be the next director of the Serious Fraud Office, um, but they hadn't announced it yet. And the, and the Times said, and I, I put a screenshot of this on, on my website, um, that there seemed to be a significant uh, um, Hit, glitch. glitch, that's the word, thank you, glitch in the vetting process of Lisa Rosowski. And that could be related to the fact that she's the monitor of HSBC and it may be difficult to extract her from that. Um, but I think it was in June it was formally announced that she was going to be the next director and and she is now the director of the Serious Fraud Office. Yeah, OK. Um yeah, because she's ex-Goldman Sachs, FBI, Department of Justice. But one of the things that they don't really say is that between um, between her two or three years as money laundering officer for Goldman Sachs in 2003-2004 and her job at Exeger from 2013, she's in London and she's working for a firm called Control Risks who are, from what I understand, they're mercenaries. It's a mercenary firm and they're big in Iraq. Okay. <laughs> um, I didn't know that. But but also I yeah. also her relationship with um, or the, the, I mean Mark Wasserman uh, she, they they were married um, I don't know when they got married but they were certainly married in the nineteen ninety the late nineteen nineties and the firm uh, uh, Sidley Austin act for HSBC in other matters not just the monitoring they act they actually act for the bank. So there's a major conflict there. So they will just say, well, Chinese walls. Um, but interestingly, they advised in tax matters for HFC Bank, which was Household Finance Corporation in the States, when uh, HSBC purchased them in 2003. Uh, Did you work for them as well? No, I've never worked, I've never worked for HSBC or HFC. I work for solicitors acting for HFC. Right, okay. um, but the, That's what but, I mean. but the, so, so you had something. But to the mention. interesting thing about that is, um, so there there is already a connection with with that law firm and HSBC, um, but it was it's been widely reported. Well, it, a few years ago, it was widely reported that many people believed that it was that purchase by HSBC of HFC that was the beginning of the the, the financial crisis because it. Uh, legitimized subprime borrowing with HSBC, uh, HFC were the largest subprime lenders in America and with HSBC purchasing them it gave it some kind of respectability which it previously lacked because HFC were such a criminal bank um, but it was okay. it was a HSBC's 
profit warning in February 2007, which was the start of the financial crisis, and it was all to do with subprime mortgages. Right, okay. Well, I'd love to blame him for that too, but um, obviously <laughs> I won't stretch that far. <laughs> Um, so, so, so the so the reason for our call again is that you have been alerted to the existence of documents that show that Lisa Ososki, who's in charge of the Serious Fraud Office, who is supposed to be uh, scrutinising the affairs of all financial and other uh, large companies in this country and small, um, preventing serious fraud, um, she's. Uh, client, she's borrowed money from HSBC who have got into massive trouble with so many people in so many places yeah. and she's supposed to be what's the word uh, objective and neutral but in actual fact her links with them are enormous yeah. uh, inclu including the fact that um, they are her bank manager Yeah, I, I also I've, I've uh, just remembered I've left out a major important aspect to this last year remember at the beginning I was talking about Amber Rudd and the National Crime Agency Last year, the National Crime Agency were told to drop their investigation into the uh, Russian money laundering. Because Who did that, Amber Rudd? Well, well uh, the official records say it was the Foreign Office, um, but she's the Home Office. Uh, you know, who, who knows? But she is certainly in charge of the National Crime Agency. Um, and the, the point is that all any investigation into Russian money laundering would lead to HSBC. And they were told to drop. Well, when you say when you say it's the Foreign Office, I mean that's Boris, isn't it? At that time. Yeah, yeah. And well, Boris. I don't know. I mean, they'll say it. And Boris, he's he played tennis for six hundred grand. Yeah. Or 100 grand <laughs> well, or they'll, they'll say anything. He played tennis I mean, with the. I, you know, they, they might have said Foreign Office to deflect from the fact that it was Amber Rudd. I don't know, but you know, that's not the point. The point is, they were told to drop the investigation. So you know, nothing is will point to HSBC. It, it, that's that's what is going on, and every you know the the, the the people at the top of this government are protecting HSBC. Well, it's also no secret that the Conservative Party have taken a lot of money from Russian. Yes, uh, yes, and and last week the um, the new chair of the Committee for Standards in Public Life, which is responsible for overseeing MPs' expenses. Um, cash for questions and that kind of thing. The new chair is Lord Evans, who is an HSBC director. I mean, they have basically taken over the government. Yeah. I mean, I remember Richard Murphy of the Tax Justice Network. I remember listening to a tax cast that he did about five or six years ago. Mm. Um, it was very good. But uh, I remember at one point, you know, he spoke just as a matter of fact about the takeover of HMRC by uh, PwC and uh, KPMG. You know, he just, he, you know, he referred to it as the takeover. And it sounds very much as though um, a very similar thing has happened in other elements of our public life by HSBC. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, I challenge people to, to find any public body that hasn't got a connection with HSBC. I can't find one. Even Transparency mm. International, you know, who, who rate Britain as one of the least corrupt countries in the world, they bank with HSBC. I mean, they are everywhere. I mean, the the recent scandal with Patisserie Valerie, they bank with HSBC, and that there was this secret overdraft. Um, I mean, the, last year, in July last year, Carillion may, uh, issued a profit warning. Carillion had now gone bust. But in July last year, the government, the, the UK finance, uh, 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 export finance, it's called, which is now overseen by Rona Fairhead, they guaranteed... Is it? Yes, now it is. It wasn't in July last year, but they guaranteed a $600 million loan from HSBC to Carillion for a job in Dubai. Carillion right. and, 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 incidentally, uh, Carillion and Kia, the construction company Kia. Now, Amber Rudd's brother, who is a PR... He owns a PR company called Finsbury. They represent both HSBC and Kia Construction. And that's where you bring in the uh, Hinkley Point nuclear power yes, yes, station. Yes, yes, right? uh, They got the um, Kia got the, the construction job for Hinkley Point, and it's it's Chinese money uh, brokered by HSBC. Yeah, because I understand that HSBC were representing EDF China 
um, yeah. and uh, Kia. Yeah. And yeah. Um, interesting how the PR and the marketing people um, have a fair role to say into what happens in terms of these deals. Yeah. I mean, uh, in that film, um, Gangsters of Finance, a French film, uh, they actually say that basically Britain gave up its sovereignty for, for HSBC in, in that Hinkley deal. And that's, I mean, on, on, on the first the first image on, my, on the, the homepage of my website is an article from the Associated Press that talks about the lawmakers and Brexit. Um, but they illustrate the article with a picture of HSBC Towers, implying that the lawmakers in Britain is HSBC, which is, which is what my point is, which is what my campaign is basically about. Well, I mean, I remember when, when the... When when Theresa May came in, people were wondering whether or not her assistant Nick Timothy uh, was going to help her stand up to whether it is HSBC or whoever to prevent the Hinkley deal. And I know they did it for a bit, but then afterwards they went through with it. Um, and lots of specialists said this is the worst deal ever. Full stop. Well, Amber this Rupp was worst deal Amber ever. Rupp was the energy secretary at the time. Right, and so it was the worst deal ever. It was the worst deal yeah. ever. It was the worst deal ever, and yet it was being waved through. Yeah. Um, but it, the the that documentary showed that for China to become the global reserve currency, it needs to be taken seriously, not by buying a few buildings, but by getting involved in Western public infrastructure projects. Absolutely, you know? and the big and the uh, biggest foreign bank in China is HSBC. Yeah, I mean, I strongly recommend people to watch that film. It's by Mark Roach, who has become a Brexiteer, funnily enough. Oh, really? Belgian. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's Belgian. Um, I came across him nearly 20 years ago when I lived in France, and I was investigating water companies. Okay. And he did some really good work on that, and he's done a film about Goldman Sachs. He lives well. in London, though. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think he's in he's in Notting Hill next door to Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so... Um, okay, um, do we have anything else to say on this subject? Because um, that's enough patience from our listeners so far. I don't think so. We could talk about the Davos in the desert and HSBC, but that's probably for another day. Or or okay, the well, um, or the, the or the Bill Browder Magnitsky farce. Um, that's another HSBC cover-up story. Uh, but but okay, again, that's um, probably for another podcast. 